Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to build a simple but very useful feature in Appian. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can create an HTML table using expression rules in Appian and then use that inside the body of an email. This is really useful if you want to send, you know, structured data like a list of users, some records and make it actually readable in an email, not just a block of text. So we are going to build it step by step. I'll set up the data and walk through how we format the HTML and then we will see how to plug it into the send email smart service. All right. So by the end of this video, you will know how to dynamically generate HTML tables from your data and send them through emails in Appian. So without any further delays, let's jump in. I have already created an expression tool. You can do that by going to new button, expression tool, and give it a name starting with the prefix of your application followed by the name of your expression tool. You can call it build HTML template or whatever fits your use case. So first things first, we are going to wrap everything inside ABANG local variables. This function lets us define local variables which we will use to store data and pieces of HTML as we go. So let's start by typing that out. Here we are going to declare a new variable called local bank data and this is going to represent a data set. Basically a list of people. Each person is represented using a bank map function which creates a dictionary like structure with keys like name, age and email. You could think of this like rows you might fetch from a database or integration. We are just hard coding it here for demo purpose. Our first record is for Bob. He's 24 years old and this is his email address. We are using a bank map here to store these values together. You can think of it like a dictionary, a set of key value pairs. All right. I have added a few more entries here. John, Elias and Charlie. Each one has a name, an age and an email. And again, in real projects, this could come from a database query or API, but the logic would remain the same. Next, we will start defining the structure of the HTML table. I'll begin with the headers, basically the top row that says name, age and email. And because this table is going to show up in an email, we want it to have some borders and spacing so it looks clean. Alright, I have declared a variable called headers. This will hold the top part of our HTML table. Basically, the table tag and the column headers. So I'm starting with the table tag, that's HTML tag that indicates that we are creating a table. So basically this tag starts a table. I have added border 1 so the table has visible borders. So it just adds a simple border around each cell so you can see the structure. Cell padding is going to add some space inside the cell which is set to 4 and setting cell spacing to 0 which is going to remove extra space between cells. Okay, these are nothing but the attributes to control the look of the table. You might notice these attributes have numbers surrounded by double, double quotes like this border, cell spacing, cell padding. That's because in Appian, to include quotes inside a string, we escape them by doubling them. If we don't, Appian thinks the string ends here and it throws a syntax error. Now, after the table tag, we open a tr tag. This tag represents one entire row in the HTML table. In this case, it's our header now. The top row that holds the column headings. So this th opens and closes a header cell for name, another header cell for age, and one more for email. And finally, we close the row with tr tag. And that's our header done. One tr tag wrapping three th tags. So we open one tr tag and inside it we have got multiple th tags, one for each column header. Now I am going to declare another variable called local table closing. This one is super simple. It is just going to close the table tag. And that's it. We will use this at the very end to close off our HTML structure properly. Alright, now that our table header is ready, let's define some useful helper variables, one for the start of each row and one for the end. So this variable local row opening holds the HTML that marks the beginning of a new row in our table. In HTML, every row of a table starts with a tr tag that stands for table row. And inside the tr, 
each data value is tapped inside td tags which stands for table data so here we are opening a new table row with tr and immediately opening the first table cell with td think of this as the opening part of the row and it tells the browser hey we are starting a new row now and here's the first cell where data will go we define this separately so that when we generate multiple rows dynamically later we can easily reuse it at the start of every iteration and this one local row closing is the exact opposite it closes the last cell of the row and then closes the row itself in html we close a table cell with a forward slash td and once all cells are done we close the row with a forward slash tr okay now comes the interesting part that is generating the rows dynamically from our data i'm gonna wrap everything inside curly braces because in appian this lets us combine multiple values and return the final result as one single output so we will start with the local bank headers which contains the opening table tag and our column headings then we will append all the data rows that we will generate with a loop and finally we will close the table tag with local bank table closing which adds the table tag but with a forward slash so i'm going to use a bank for each to loop through each item in local bank data and create an html row for it so if local bank data has four people bob john alice and charlie a bank for each will run four times and each time every bank item will represent one of those people so we are passing it local bank data as a list to loop through and for each person in that list it is going to run whatever is inside the expression block once and inside that block we can use every bank item to reference the current item now let's talk about how we are building each row i'm starting with local bank row opening which gives me tr td that's the start of a new row and the first cell then i'm concatenating bob's name that's every bank item dot name then i'm closing that cell with a forward slash td and opening a new one with td and adding the age that's every bank item dot age same thing again close open another cell and add the email that's every bank item dot email and finally i'm ending the whole row with local bank row closing which gives us td and tr but with a forward slash so every time this loop runs it produces one full html row for that person and now going to add the final piece that's local bank table closing this is going to close everything up so this variable that's local bank table closing holds the html closing tab for the entire table okay so every table that starts with table must also be closed with a closing table tag so by appending local table closing at the very end we ensure a table is properly wrapped and fully valid html so here we are concatenating everything the local bank headers the rows and the local bank table closing so we are joining them using the ampersand operator which is how appian concatenates text and once you put all this together you get one clean complete html table string cool and here the a bank for each function returns a list of strings one for each row but when we are building html we do not want a list we want a single continuous string so we are going to use joinery function that will take all those strings and merge them into one big string with no commas or separators and giving us the continuous block of html rows so when this entire expression runs it produces one big html string that's gonna be a complete table now i'll go ahead and test this out and do you see that I'm getting this one big HTML string as a result. And that's it. Our table is now complete from start to finish. Okay, so this is ready. I'll go ahead and save my changes. Now we will move on to the next step. That is sending this table through an email using a process model. So I will now switch over to the Appian Designer view and create a process model. Here inside Appian Designer, click on the new button in the top right corner and from the drop down select process model give it a meaningful name and i always recommend writing a clear description so that other developers know exactly what this process model does and once you are done click create now appian automatically gives us two nodes when a new process model is created the start node and the end node 
the start node is where the process begins and the end node is where it stops and we will be doing everything between these two nodes that is where we will add the send email smart service so now let's drag in the send email smart service on the left hand side in the activities pane under smart service scroll down until you find send email or just type in the name in the search bar and now drag and drop that right between the start node and end node just like this make sure it is properly connected okay and now let's configure the send email node double click on this node or just right click and choose properties you will see several tabs and we are going to focus mainly on the setup tab since that is where we define what the email actually says all right we will fill in a few key fields in the to field we need to enter the recipient's email address inside to email address function i'll just type out my email address and click save and close and now comes the most important part that is adding our html table remember that expression rule we built earlier the one that returns a complete html table string right we are going to call that rule right here in the body so in the message body click the expression editor button that opens the expression window calling that rule in here with the help of rule bank domain and once you are done click save and close i'll also give our email a clear subject line i'll just type html table this way we will instantly know what the email is about when we receive it all right our process model is configured and we have set up the send email smart service to call our html table now it's time to test it and make sure everything works end to end i'm going to press ctrl d to start the process for debugging that's a shortcut key for starting the process so we can see if it sends out the email successfully to see that process ran through our flow it started sent the email and then ended if everything goes well we should have an email in our inbox within just a few seconds all right now let's hop over to my gmail and see if we have received it i'm gonna give it a second here to refresh and i don't see anything in the main inbox just yet it's still nothing for now so let's do what we always do in these cases we check the spam folder right all right opening the spam folder and there we go there it is a dynamic html table so sometimes what happens appian sends from a system account or a testing environment and gmail might initially treat it as a spam and that's totally normal take a look at this email we have got a headers name age and email and all of our data rows neatly displayed inside the email body this means our HTML table rule worked perfectly. And that's how you can generate a table directly inside your email body. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it with someone who might need it. I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.